Methods to get your Pokemon to level 100 have been getting faster and easier with each Pokemon game each year, with Blissey bases making things a breeze in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, Chansey grinding, getting 6 of your Pokemon to level 100 in less than 10 minutes, in the post game of Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, and now, with the inclusion of extra large experience candy in Sword and Shield, you're able to get your level 1 Pokemon to level 100 in literally the space of 5 seconds. If if you have enough candy of course. I thought I'd test this to the uttermost limit by showing you how it's possible to get your starter Pokemon to level 100 within the first hour of gameplay. Within an hour of starting your save file, a sentence that would be absolutely preposterous in any other Pokemon title, but in Sword and Shield is actually feasible. In no way is this supposed to demonstrate how easy Pokemon games have become, more so showcasing under the most extreme of circumstances how you can take total advantage of how the game works. So, how are we going to go about doing this? We are going to play the game completely like normal, obtain our starter Pokemon, beat Hop, beat Hop again for good measure, and make it to the wild area after hopping on a train from Postwick. It is here, once we arrive into the wild area, that we obtain the Wycom, and the ability to partake in max raid battles that the fun is going to begin. We are going to be taking advantage of max raid battles, more specifically, the simply incredibly generous rewards rare 5 star max raid battles give you, even at the very beginning of your journey. Any rare tier 5, and to clarify I mean the raids with the purple beam, a gold background in the lobby, Max Raid Battle that you defeat no matter what point you are in the main story of the game, no matter how many gym badges you have, will always, always give you a set allocation of rewards. You are guaranteed to receive 3 large experience candy, as well as 3 extra large experience candy, which totals 120,000 experience, free to give to your Pokemon at any point. Enough to take your starter Pokemon from level 5 to level 50 in the space of 5 seconds, which is completely unheard of in previous Pokemon titles and exceptionally overpowered and is arguably a little bit of an oversight by Game Freak. The game doesn't intend on you being able to defeat 5 star max raid battles this early on in the game and are only defeatable solo if you have Pokemon level 70 and above. However, due to the online functions, you are able to join anyone's max raid battles at any time simply if you are connected to the internet. You just refresh your Wycom's browser and it will give you a list of available max raids either near you or across the world. Joining these max raids will mean you'll have at least one person in the lobby capable of doing enough damage, and if you're lucky, three people who have completed the game with high enough level Pokemon to easily defeat the raid, even with you slacking, probably fainting every other turn, not doing any damage with for example this level 10 score bunny. We are going to take advantage of this even further by using the function slash exploit oversight to repeatedly be able to do the same max raid battle again and again by having the host of the rare 5 star max raid battle restart their game each time we beat it and claim the rewards. If it's in the game, I'm willing to take advantage of it. So, what I've done is I've spawned in with wishing pieces a rare 5 star ditto max raid battle on one console, as Ditto is simply so easy to take down with any Pokemon that has fighting type attacks, and we are going to join that raid with our secondary game on a secondary Nintendo Switch that has just started the game and reached the wild area with about 35 minutes of playtime. After each raid we defeat, I'm going to restart my game on the first console, so we have an infinite rate of rare 5 star max raid battles to take on with our new save file, to obtain the experience candy as quick as humanly possible. Now, a little bit of math, Score Bunny is in the medium slow experience group, meaning it takes pretty much 1,060,000 experience points to reach level 100 from level 1. With each raid giving us 120,000 experience worth of experience candy, that means in 9 raids we will be able to get our starter Pokemon to level 100 with the collected experience candy. Each raid will take roughly 3-4 to four minutes, meaning we should 
be able to get enough candy to get our starter Pokemon to level 100 within the first hour of starting this save file, which is absolutely insane. The preparation takes longer than actually putting the method into practice, and we blitz through the Ditto Raids with absolutely zero issue. Having a level 10 score bunny doesn't make these Ditto Raids any more difficult, and our pile of experience candy gets larger and larger with each raid. Once we have defeated our ninth rare 5 star max raid battle, we have amassed enough experience candy to now level up our starter Pokemon, our companion score bunny, to level 100. The fact that this is even possible without even stepping foot into the wild area is absolutely insane to me as an old school Pokemon fan. I remember when getting a Pokemon to level 100 was a nigh on next to impossible task, but with the quality of life features introduced in recent Pokemon games and in particular, now with Sword and Shield, you can do it before you even take on the first gym, which is so crazy to rack my brain around. Sure, it takes knowledge of the game, and if you're trying to do it in under an hour of in-game playtime, like me, a bit of prior preparation, but anyone who's just raiding with their friends at the beginning of the game and enjoying the wild area in a slow-paced way will easily be able to rack up enough candy to level up their entire party to previously unimaginable levels, which I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, I guess it's a good thing. I can't imagine how demoralising it is for Hop, who in our third battle with him in Motostoke, while he's using level 11s and just about getting his head around type advantages, we show up with our fully evolved level 100 starter Pokemon. I, I, kind, of, I kind of feel bad for him, sort of. Now, do I actually recommend you going out of your way and doing this? Honestly, no, not really. If you're experienced with Pokemon games, if you've been playing your entire life like me, Pokemon games in their nature just aren't really difficult, especially on a second or a third playthrough. So any time spent by getting your starter to level 100 this early on in the game could have easily been saved by just knowing what to catch and when, and being prepared with enough X items or a Pokemon able to readily set up with an attack like Sword Stance or Coil, and just generally knowing each different type matchup. But just doing this as a challenge to see if it's possible? Oh, absolutely. I can say that it's incredibly fun to do this. The point of any challenge in Pokemon isn't for practicality. It's to see if you can. To push the boundaries of the game mechanics and make the game do things it really wasn't intended to do. And challenges like this definitely add more longevity to a game, especially if you've already played through it once or twice. Were we able to get our starter to level 100 within the first 60 minutes of gameplay, according to our save file? No. No, we did fall short by a tiny bit, by about 10 minutes or so, but does it really matter? The fact that something like this is even remotely possible says it all, and honestly, unfortunately, I'd be very, very surprised if this feature, and by feature I mean experience candy as a whole, if this remains in future main series Pokemon titles. The way they've implemented it is balanced, sure. You wouldn't be able to do this by yourself, but I can imagine in future games, Game Freak will limit connectivity to other players to restrict the possibility of this at all, which really wouldn't be the correct step to take. Only the most hardcore and dedicated fans will do this, people who are just trying to push the game to its limits after already completing it. And the candy themselves are such an amazing quality of life feature that makes obtaining competitive Pokemon so much easier. Like, without this candy, it would be so difficult to get your Pokemon to level 100 in this game, and would make the use of bottle caps nearly impossible. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to have plenty more game-breaking challenges coming up over the next few weeks. A like could be amazing if you did enjoy, or feel free to dislike and tell me in the comments what I could have done to make the video better. And if you're interested in more videos like this, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss any of them. Thanks for watching guys, really means a lot. See you next time.